Being able to sort repeating groups dynamically is basically integral to every app. So let's have a look at how I do it. So we have a repeating group of users. We have a full name and the joining date. These are the two columns that we'll be using to sort with. So in the database, here we can see we have Jamie Jackson and she joined on the 1st of January, 2019. So here's my repeating group set to full list. So it will display the entire list on page load. And currently I have this input search here. That input is going to search any text field and filter search results by the text field. Let's throw a drop down sort into the mix. So I'm going to grab a drop down, going to position it on the right hand side. Going to set static choices. And the two choices I'd like are name and dates joined. Pay close attention to capitalizing words as this is necessary. It needs to be exactly the same when we are writing our expressions. I'm not going to have a default value. Okay, so we have our drop down. Now, how do we tie that into the repeating group? So at the moment, we are searching for users by default. If the input search is not empty, so if there's some data in there, we'll be filtering by any field. But at the moment on page load, it will be empty and it will sort by created date. Let's have one last look. Okay, so as we can see, it's just random sorting on the full name and random sorting on the dates here. So what we need to actually do is change the data source. And how we do that is through a conditional. What we'll say is when the dropdowns sort, when this value is, now let's say date joined, because by default, I'm going to set the sorting on the name by default. And we'll change the data source. And let's copy and paste because we have some constraints in there I want to copy over. And all we need to do is sort by joining date and let's say descending, so the most recently joined people at the top of the list. And that's all we ne really need to do. Now in the appearance tab, let's set the data source by default to full name which means that when we, we only have to write one conditional, which is date join, because the default will be the full name. So when we flick back to full name, it will remove that conditional and just revert back to the default full name. Let's see it in action. Okay, I'm actually going to change the full name to descending no so we start at a that's probably an expected function okay so we're sorting by full name here if i had to choose date joined there we have june 6 2020 at the top june 3rd 2015 at the bottom if i then flick to the name it's going to remove that conditional and just order by name and if I remove it all together, it's still ordered by the name. What if we set creation date by default, then the name, and then the date joined? Well, then we could say created date. Doesn't make a huge amount of sense given we're talking about users here, but anyway, then we could have created date here. And then we could check this box that says this input should not be empty. 
So then by default, what we say is the created date, most recent at the top. And what we need to do is create a second conditional, okay? So we're going to duplicate this conditional. And this needs to say name. And then copy and paste the data source. And just change this to name. Descending, no, we want ascending. So random sorting because it's the creation date. Name, starting at A, and then date joined, starting at 2020, ending 2015, and back to create a date, which is random sorting. Now, how about combining a search result with an input? That will work as well, because what we have done on the repeating group is set the constraint here, and then below that, set the sort. So if we say, let's search for marketing. Here we have three results. Now, if we flick this to name, we've got A at the top. If we flick it to date joined, we've got 2019 at the top, and then back to create a date.